And each Friday morning at this time, we check in with 4th District Congressman Jim Himes of Greenwich. And good morning, Congressman. Welcome. How are you doing today? Good morning. Uh, just fine. Thank you, Tony. All right. Uh, let's 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 talk about uh, uh, you have been appointed to the uh, Congressional Northeast uh, Recovery Task Force as we look to reopen the economies. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so this is a group um, of um, representatives from uh, of, of both parties, Democrats and Republicans, uh, from the uh, Northeast states, that is to say New Jersey, New York, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, um, just to uh, uh, try to consolidate the information that we get uh, from experts that we hear from pretty much um, uh, every day um, on things like how do we best roll out testing, how do we um, think about a phased uh, opening where, uh, you know, those least dangerous activities are, are opened up first and ultimately how we get back to normal in a, in a phased and careful way. And the thought is that, you know, lots of us get lots of different information, so we will uh, uh, put that all together, come up with recommendations, and then offer those up to uh, uh, to governors. You know, governors, as you know, uh, Tony, will uh, really be at the, uh, um, at the center of making these decisions. And uh, so we just figured we would uh, uh, you know, serve as a as a group that could pitch in with um, uh, you know the best thinking of people at CDC and, and uh, uh, you know doctors, epidemiologists, all those. Uh, and then of course there's a, a legislative role here too because many of these things will uh, will uh, will cost money um, or otherwise require legislation. So we're just hoping to pay a, play a constructive role uh, in the process of reopening our uh, our economy and our society. And along with the reopening, um, I note also that uh, to prepare for a possible second wave of coronavirus. Is that correct? Well, yeah. And, I mean, we, we, we hope that's not the case. Um, you know, but the fact is you're already seeing um, both activity, which you probably shouldn't see. Um, everybody saw the photographs of, uh, and, the, and the video of uh, very crowded beaches in Orange County, Calif- uh, Orange County, California. You know, we're still seeing um, episodes of people getting together in dangerous ways here. Um, and, uh, you know, states are actually officially opening um, in the coming days. And, uh, you know, it, no one knows enough about this virus to say, oh, well, that's going to be fine. That's not going to provoke a second, uh, a second wave of the viruses. So, yes, we're going to keep a close eye on that, too. All right. And uh, what about Congress itself? When does Congress reopen? Yeah, well, um, we were actually supposed to go back this uh, coming Monday, the 4th of May, uh, but in the end, the advice of the uh, uh, the House attending physician um, was that there were, we're still not ready for that. Uh, remember, when you bring back um, at least the House, and I think the Senate may actually be coming back next week, that's a smaller body, uh, but when you bring back 435 uh, people, those people spend a lot of time in airports, they get on airplanes. Uh, they, they go through another airport, and so I think um, uh, the leadership and the medical authorities wanted another week to make sure that they could do that safely. Now, we did this last week, right? We, we actually did a vote on Thursday of last week. Um, you know, that involved a lot of special procedures, it involved a lot of people wearing masks, and of course involved uh, absolutely minimal staff participation. So I, I think the theory is we're going to work out all those procedures, and then we'll be back at it, uh, not this coming Monday, but the, uh, the following week, the week of May 11th, because, um, you know, we've obviously got work to do, and I think it's appropriate uh, that we be back and actually doing that work. Um, we're asking an awful lot of other people, um, you know, our military, CDC uh, officers, census officers, Social Security people, you know, the IRS is obviously working hard on these uh, economic impact payments. Uh, we're asking an awful lot of other people to be back at work, and I believe we should be too. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, sooner is better. All right, speaking of the IRS, leads me to the next question. You've been uh, sending out information to your constituents about uh, about uh, the economic impact uh, uh, payments. Uh, what can you tell, uh, what have you been telling people um, if they haven't gotten any money yet, how to avail of themselves of money and that kind of thing? Yeah, well, um, so the last I heard, only 24 hours ago, the Treasury had uh, sent out somewhere in the neighborhood of 95 million of those payments. Um, so they're, they're somewhere around halfway, right? Um, and that's... Um, uh, a, a combination of the fact that some people are just going to have to get paper checks because the IRS doesn't have their uh, uh, banking information. And I would urge people, uh, obviously it's their decision, but I would urge people um, to go to the irs.gov website and enter their banking information. And the reason for that is that it could really speed your payment up by a matter of weeks, maybe even some months. Um, but then, of course, you've just got the problems uh, uh, that are out there. Um, there are individual cases. There are uh, people who uh, 
had children over the course of uh, you know the year, and those children are entitled to their five hundred dollars. Well, the IRS may not know about that, and so there's any number of problems and glitches. That uh, um, the first uh, line of defense, of course, is going to that IRS.gov website. To, there's there is a there is a little portal on there, a little click, a little thing you can click on that is about tracking my payment. Uh, and ultimately, if that's not satisfying, if you can't get the information you want, uh, my office, my staff is helping an awful lot of people. And so uh, I'd encourage people to call my office or the office of the two senators uh, who can also sometimes get answers on these questions. And I guess the IRS uh, is working on the uh, website's looking working a little better, I guess, than it had at the beginning. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and, you know, remember, this uh, none of this stuff existed uh, four weeks ago. Um, and so, uh, as uh, technology tends to do, it was uh, it was pretty buggy out of the uh, out of the box. And in fact, you know, we saw this in a variety of programs, including the uh, famous Paycheck Protection Program loans that, that had such incredible demand. Uh, so yes, I mean, uh, a lot of these sites, a lot of these uh, programs are not designed for the volume that they're experiencing. So. Um, my understanding is that it's working better now, but yes, there were some there were some glitches out of the box, no doubt. And speaking of that uh, PPP, what are businesses telling you? Are they getting their money? Well, I'm hearing more and more are, yeah. You know, and um, you know, my hope is that uh, uh, the second slug of money, the 310 billion dollars that we uh, that we uh, passed into law exactly a week ago, actually will satisfy uh, a good chunk of the demand. But you know, uh, this this is also this this second chunk of money is going to run out. Um, it's not going to fully satisfy demand, uh, and so I keep encouraging people, if you uh, think you want a Paycheck Protection Program loan, uh, and, and remember, it's not just small businesses, it's also nonprofits, um, really now is the time to apply um, because uh, it's likely we're going to have to go back to that well a third time. All right, Congressman Himes, as always, thanks very much. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Tony. Take care. That's Fourth District Congressman Jim Himes. Your Greenwich joins us each Friday morning at this.